Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar with Scott Pulsini, a futures trader. You may have heard of him. Uh, anyone who's new in here, let me just give a, a little bit of background uh, about these webinars and, and what they're about. Uh, well, as you know, as a Global Plus subscriber, what you get access to is um, an educational course and then forward-looking live analysis three days a week uh, at the same time here, 10 a.m., uh, so that you can apply what you've learned from that course in the live market and and understand the order flow uh, and integrate that within your trading strategies. Then we have trading strategies from Scott Pulsini on Thursdays and on Wednesdays, J Trader, uh, Stocks Trader, so that you can then also uh, bounce these ideas around uh, and maybe uh, find something that works for you uh, from a a professional trader here that um, is going to be taking some live positions. So this completes the education uh, that you get with Bookmap. Um, and one of the things that uh, you really get here um, is not just their setups and uh, strategies for uh, trading order flow and their ways of looking at it, but it, but the trade uh, management. And this is something that we're not going to cover. I mean, in detail, uh, we do cover it, but not not in detail. Uh, in, a, in an actual trade uh, in the um, uh, live analysis webinars, uh, but what they will hear uh, because uh, uh, you know this is very specific to their trading, uh, and that's something to take away here. That's I, I just think is golden. Uh, so uh, you know that adds this other element in here. Uh, if you like what you see from Scott, uh, you can reach out to him. He offers um, mentoring and uh, education. Uh, all the links are in the GoToWebinar chat, so just click on some of those links there. You've got his email. You've got all sorts of things in there. Uh, his his uh, uh, educational course, as well as here, let me just go through it here. Uh, his educational course in his trading room here uh, that's on Discord. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, reach out to Scott and uh, ask more about all of that. Let's go through the disclosures and then turn it over to Scott. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Uh, live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. So, like I said, this completes the education. This is not a shadowing trading room. Uh, that would be foolish. Okay, pick up things here from a live or a professional trader uh, in the live market and and uh, uh, study them. Uh, integrate these these ideas into your trading strategies if you like them, uh, and um, they're very specific. Uh, so uh, uh, that's why we have them here. Uh, and uh, and in demo or simulation, it you know one one transaction or one lot. Uh, or 100 shares or whatever can can make a difference in the live market. So I uh, just needed to understand that, that um, the, the realism here uh, with the trading performance uh, in simulation. Our, our simulator is very good. It does put you in the queue, um, and uh, you, you know you you will get slipped as well. But uh, anyway, uh, know what you're dealing with. Uh, risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And uh, good morning, Alan. Good morning, David. Uh, and um, uh, let me turn it over to Scott and let him take it away. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. All right, watching goal here. I have a small position on. Um, this is a pretty crucial area. You see these stop buy stops just fired off here. Uh, so I will be quick to cover this long or add to it if it can accept back into this area, market profile area that I'll show you here in a second. Um, Crude ice iceberg cell CL, 150 contracts. All right, so <clears throat> let's see here, bigger picture stuff. So the balance we broke down from the other day. 
retested it yesterday, failed. And I'll show you this zone here in a second, but failed at this zone twice. And now this is a straight beeline move. Gold ice TC, 172 contracts. You can hear all the stuff firing off. So this is there's some good participation here. I actually just covered one. I shouldn't have, I should have just held on to it, but we, I'll show you why I covered one of them, just because this is an area where it could do this. I love trading, I love fading areas. Um, I, you know, it's not that you fade directional conviction, this is 100% directional conviction, but I like fading it, directional conviction, when it moves into a very important area. You can see we're coming into this high volume node. So yesterday we failed at the bottom of this, now we're coming high volume node. This is a straight move. I will short this here if I get the right setup um with the volume so i'm long but i'm going to cover this here if this fails up here again i got out of one a little lower i'm going to show you here why and then i will flip here so you can see here this was a so these blue are composites these are two days mer two or more days merged see we opened up here this morning got immediately inside here covered this entire thing and now we have come up to this area here. So this is a very important area. Nice size for by CL. Whether this accepts into this market profile composite in market's tendencies, when they accept, they go to the other side, or if this fails back out of here, it, it'll probably come back down to here. So that's what I'm watching here. And especially because we know, yes, the market profile is basically a, you know, it's the same as, the balance area stuff it's just a different look at it but we know that this is you know from what i just showed you this is an important area so if we get a little higher right if we're able to overtake this high volume node of this balance that we broke down from then i'll change my tune but this is again one straight line you can see this prior zone i built from other stuff the bottom you know the tail 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 to the bottom of this balance area so this and then you got this so this could easily just do that again if we get above here then i'll be looking long for sure um so you can see here it's like just starting to struggle here so i'm going to probably based on this new signal get out of this if this fails you can see this four and a last stop run so there was back to back stop runs here i don't need to let this come all the way back on me to get out of this trade um out of this long because I know we're in a very important area. So this needs to hold basically right here if this is going to continue higher. I'm basically just going to stop this out. I'll go half ATR below this latest zone. So you can see ATR is 27.3. Just move the decimal so it means ATR for five minutes is 27 ticks. So I'm going to go 13. I'm going to just go half, half ATR. I'm going to go actually 14 ticks below this zone, which would put me at uh, it's actually put me right in the middle of this zone, so I'll stop out below these two. So this was a prior, this is the other stop run that just happened too. So you can see here, you had this stop run here. This is a stop and hold. And then he had another stop run right here, and this is trying to become a stop and hold as well. Right, this zone here. So if this fails, I'm giving this a chance to fail and then it gets below this, this stop run here, then I'm going to be out of this long and then I'm going to be looking for shorts. I mean, you could actually go short immediately, but let's just see what happens here. Um, you could add to this as well. Let's see how far we got above. So again, I like to see an ATR move away from the, the latest zone. So again, 27 ticks. Did this get 27 ticks above this zone here? We got up to 94. Now we got about 20 ticks. So this is not enough. We don't really know what this is yet. Meaning, as I say, so I have names for my setups, right? So there's a, either a dumb and dumber. A dumb and dumber is when you get the stop run. There's no real buying behind it, and then it fails. That's a dumb and dumber. A stop and hold is when it, you get the stop run. It holds and then continues to go. That means the big money is, is stepping in behind the dumb money puke, right? So the way I, I try to to judge these areas is by if it is, and this is just my experience from using you know using this for almost two years now is, you know, I use ATR to to, to judge the zone and to be, you know to figure out what kind of setup it is. So I need to see 27 ticks above here, and then that would be a step and hold. 
what I tell my room, you know, you guys, the, the zones are the zones, the, the areas are the areas, They're, that's black and white. What you can do is come up with different variations on how you like to trade these areas, right? You may not, you may say, the minute I see this stop room come in and I know we're bullish, we're accepting that market profile, I'm getting long right here and I'm gonna stop out right there, right? Or you can, you know, do it like me where I get, usually I'll go a full ATR below here, actually an ATR and a half a lot of times. But there's certain situations where I don't have to risk that much, and this is one of them. That, that's why this stop is here. But my point is, you can come up with your own scenarios, your own uh, strategies with these zones. The zones are the zones, but you can tr trade these how you want to trade them based on your thesis of the market, right? So that's how I trade them personally. So we don't really know what this is yet. Again, if this comes all the way back here, it's asking me out. That's fine. It's going to be a small profit, um, but then I'll be looking for a potential short opportunity because, again, this is this would fail to accept inside this composite. And then we'd be back out of here, and then I'd be looking for a move back in the air. Uh, but if this does hold, then I'm going to go long, and then I'm going to look for a move back up in the air. Some other important things that I look at. These are Ludwig levels, been using these for multiple months now. They're pretty incredible. <clears throat> Good support and resistance and just gives you a overall um, targets. And again, she doesn't give up her secret sauce. She's been in business for probably 11, 12 years, I think, and she has many followers. So these are based on something with market profile, volume profile. You know, I, again, I don't usually use mystical <laughs> indicators, but I, I have an idea based on what I where these draw, like they, they have something to do with the market profile and and they're they're pretty incredible. I mean, guys in the room, all they do is like, you know, ES new lugs, NQ new lugs. So these are awesome to use with your setups, right? So you can see here we came down here last night, we couldn't hold below the shell lug. We call these baby lugs, bounced off this twice, got back above, and we broke the red lug, built new lugs. So a lot of times Many times when you build new lugs, it'll go to the, the next lug. So the red is resistance, the blue is support. So that's where we're at right now. And you can see this resistance is right at this profile that I just, I mean, the uh, yeah, market profile, composite profile that I just showed you. So this is a very important area. So this is what I'm saying. You could go long here if this, if that uh, stop and hold holds on the book map, right? For a move back up in a year. And you can see the red lugs pretty close to that. If this fails, you can play a move back down in here, at least to the top of this prior profile that I just showed you, right? So that's how you kind of use these in conjunction. You can see that they pretty much line up with the market profile. So that's how you can pretty much bet that they're, that's one of her, she says she has like 12 inputs, but that's obviously one of them. So again, important level right here. I would prefer to fade this because again, that straight B line move I told you, but this could gold, gold's a different animal. Gold could do this, right? Like <laughs> the directional conviction could go on for a long time. So I'm aware of that as well. So we'll see here. And last, once again, I know I spent a lot of time on this, but nothing else is going on here. Um, this is an important area. This could do that. If we get through here, then we're probably coming back into these areas here where this failed. So watching that, again, I am currently long tiny. I will stop out. If this does get an ATR above here, retest fail, then I'll go long. I'll give it the long shot. I mean, I'll add to this, I should say. All right, so let's check out uh, some other stuff. Let's look at these equities. Equities are just in no man's land as far as I'm concerned right here. Start with market profile. Oops, I mean to do that. So you can see here, this is a two day composite. Actually, I should not have that drawn very well. There you go. So you can see we continue to fail, and I'll show you yesterday's trade here. We continue to fail at this prior composite. And we traded through here a few times, but it's still very relevant. When you look at yesterday's trade, so 
this was yesterday. You can see here, two different attempts to get in here, failure, failure, failure again. So if this market's bullish, why are we not getting into here and getting and ripping up, right? So again, a lot of times when a market tests an area enough, then it finally will break through, but this is telling you a story. So now when you merge these two days together and you get your composite, This is telling me a story. So this is an area you could trade now. I, I was thinking we we're down here because I've been talking about gold for the last 20 minutes. But if I get a short signal here, I will take it. This try to get out, this failed again. Now we're back inside this composite. The tendency is to get to the other side when they, you know, especially if it fails and then possibly out of here. So that's what I'm watching right now. When you look at it from this view, we basically just, We've been talking about this in the room. We had this yesterday or a couple of days ago. We tried to break out yesterday, failed, but it held what? The high volume node, buy and tail, buy and tail, buy and tail. And now this is just building more balance. I mean, you can make this one big balance, but whatever way this breaks is going to be the trade, right? If this breaks higher, we're into that composite I just showed you. I will go long and I'll watch this area where this gap down from and or back into this, pro, this uh, balance area we broke down from. If this fails, now what you have here, again, this is balance, balance, this held. We talk about this as a playbook, one of the playbook options in the room where you, everyone should have this playbook where you have a balance, try to break out, build more balance, and then if that breaks down, you have a breakdown of this current balance through the high volume node of the prior balance, that's a great trade. So. That's the better trade for a short, but I will short this. If I get a signal, volume signal right now, I will short this up here at the top of this balance area because of what I just showed you, you cannot get in that prior um, composite, right? So let's see if there's been anything in here. It's been nothing size wise yet in here that I can see. So I'm just waiting for my volume signal. So that's this is how I trade, right? I come up with my thesis of what I think is happening what story is unfolding, right? The story for me is we tried to break into that composite multiple times. We're back in the current composite. That's a story of a, a bearish a bearish story for me. So now I'm looking for a setup to trade on the short side, right? If we move higher, that changes my outlook, my thesis, my story. I'll look for a bullish setup, right? So that that's how I trade. So I, I get my thesis and I wait for real time volume and the most powerful thing on the planet, the SI indicator for futures trading, to confirm and then I trade trade that way. And you control your risk by the by the zones and ATRs from the zones. Hopefully we'll get an opportunity um, to trade that. <clears throat> Let me show you. Here's an ASDAQ. Same type of look. This thing is just one big balance. Yesterday was a little mystifying as far as we had this again look like a fail breakout and this one actually did get through the high volume node normal markets do that and this held and it just put in buy and tail buy and tail buy and tail and came back and now this is just basically one big balance so breaks this way i'm looking long breaks this way i'm looking short i will possibly short up here because I think we're at the same spot in here as we are in ES. Let's take a look. Same thing, right? What story is this telling me? My thesis. Well, I just showed you that balance. We're basically at the top of the balance, but this told me this is today's trade. We opened up, we tried to get out. We couldn't even make it back to this guy. We're back inside here. So if I get a short signal, I will take it. It's not the best place because we're pretty close to this point in control, which is just the area of a composite that there was the most trade. That's why it juts out. Just imagine this as a statistical, for those of you taking statistics, that's all this is. It's a bell curve flipped over, right? So this is where in statistics, the more, I, I can't forget, the, was it the median or the mean? I can't remember. It's been about 80 years since I've been in college, but that's what that is. That's what a point of control is. Um, so it's not the best place to trade, but I, the story that unfolded for me was we tried to break out of this, couldn't do it. If I get a short single, I will get short. I will watch the bottom of this. If we get out of here, then it's really go time. 
So that's what I'm watching. So right now I am short biased to equities. <clears throat> Um, and it's just as quiet as a church mouse right now, so we gotta just sit here and you know, Fox TC, 270 contracts. All right, so this is a chance. To, now, we I just went over this for the first 15 minutes of this webinar, so this is another setup. We know we're inside that composite. I will add to this trade if the worst case scenario is now I can trail my stop based on this new setup. This setup should not be violated the downside if this is truly bullish or continue, it is bullish, but continues to be bullish here, right? So here's your stop. You can see right here, this was 270 stop run. Right, so now what I can do is look at my ATR. So this is it for this market. This is do or die here, right? This is it. This is where I buy a note. This is where this broke down from. Directional conviction started. This is it. So it's either going to rip and then this thing could keep going or it's going to fail. So I'm going to now, if this rips up higher, retest fail, I will get long. I was going to do it to this, this prior stop that we just talked about, but I never got that chance, right? We never got an ATR, a full ATR above here. We got close, it retested and then went but that's fine. So I'm watching this. The worst case scenario is I can trail my stop now, right? So ATR is 26, let's say 27 is 26.4. So I'll go 27 ticks below this zone that just fired off. Is this the right zone? Yeah. So we got 20, 78, 72. That actually puts me right in the middle of this zone, but So I'm able, based on the new setups, this help really helps you control your risk, right? It's not just this guessing game where, you know, you don't know where to put your stop or you're doing what most traders erroneously do. I'm going to, I'm going to trail my stop to break even. Again, the market doesn't care where your break even point is, meaning this thing, you know, if I, if I were to put it at break even this and there's nothing here, this thing can easily do this and it means nothing. It just means you're getting algoed, right? I'm putting this based on set up where it shouldn't violate it right it's not because I, I i don't i just want to break even on that or i don't want to lose profit back again the market doesn't care where you want to lose don't want to lose profit back the market cares about real-time volume areas that fired off and that's where you should be trailing your stops based on not not where you personally don't want to lose money or get money back and that's what most traders do and that's why most traders don't make it in this game you can see where are we most likely about to about to touch I will watch this to potentially get out of this. If I don't even get a chance to add to this trade on this newest, if this goes straight here, if this, you know, we know how liquidity is a magnet, it'll come up here. If this struggles here, I'll get out of this and then I'll, then I'll wait for a retest and I'll get back in. So these are one, that's one of the areas that I get out, I will get out. If liquidity fails, I will get out of the trade, um, at least a portion. If, if I had multiple on, I wouldn't get out of a full, full amount. I wait for an opposing setup to get out of my full amount, meaning, so for this, say I had two on, I would get out one here and then I would wait and then I would wait for a bearish setup. So maybe like a Dumb and Dumber or uh, Sell Ice came in and that failed during a Titanic setup, then I would get out. That's a bearish signal where not that I would go short based on my thesis up here, but I would get out of the trade because of the real time volume setup. So if that makes sense. But as usual, paper is going to get their way and we're going to go right up here and fill this liquidity. You can bet on it. Any questions, Bruce? Mm, yeah, just coming in now. Um, Gold stock hey, PC, 196 contracts. How did I guess that? So here's another setup. I'm kind of mad I wasn't able to add to this. But it is what it is. At least I had something on. All right, so I'm just going to get out right now of that one lot. I'm not going to even give this, I know this is a new setup, but I'm not going to give this a chance to fail because I took out that liquidity. If this gets above here, retest, and I'll get back in. I'll show you what I mean here in a second, but I don't need to see this come back a full ATR is what I'm saying to, to get me out of this trade. Of course, I sold right at the bottom of that zone. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. There's it went it went further. 
No, I sold right at the bottom of the zone. I could have, I could have, oh, I could have waited to draw it and at least gone a little bit below the zone, right? I got out like right at the bottom of the zone, and of course it did that. And that's fine. Again, this is an area that this is do or die here for gold. I can definitely see this pulling back, and you know what you can do now is wait for pullbacks. And we talk about this in the room too. These are these. This is like a vacuum trade. This has nothing to do with structure, but once. You start to get these areas built. Again, this like Bruce said at the beginning of the webinar, right? This is obviously not to mirror me. This is to come up with, to see how I do things and come up with your own ideas, right? You're never going to make money mirroring someone, mirroring somebody. You don't know their thought process. You don't know, like for instance, in this one right here, this is I have a variation of what I usually do because in my mind, this is a very important area. I don't have to wait for an ATR, so I get out right here. So how are you going to even know? that I, I would do something like that, right? If you're marrying my trades, you'd be like, well, why? I've been in trade rooms, I've, I've watched guys do this, especially when I was researching for my own trade room. Like, I, want, I just wanted to see how other guys do it. I had a couple of guys that told me about trade rooms. I would get in and the guy would be long and then he would just randomly get out. It's like, well, how does that, that doesn't help anybody that's watching you with it. You don't give them a reason, right? So the whole point is, you know, I try to give you guys my reasons as best as I can, um, because if I can't give you a reason, then, that's that I'm in trouble because I need to have a reason that I'm doing things. But the point is, come up with your own. I, you know, I'll show you this. I'll show you that. I'll show you that. I showed you market profile. I showed you the level levels. I showed you balance area stuff like that. Say, hey, I like that. I like that. I don't like that. And then come up with your own trade plan. But what I'm trying to show you here is this is another variation of what you can play in these zones where once these markets establish these zones, just we showed like four or five of them yesterday afternoon alone in my webinar afternoon where. This will fail or this will stop here and then it'll move to the prior zones and then it'll move back and then that causes your balance areas right so you can come up with strategies where you're like you know what i'm not playing directional i'm just waiting for zones to be built and then when one zone fails i play it in the next one or i play it a full hourly atr into the next one right so like right now an hourly atr for gold is i don't use this for my for my stop stuff let's see do this every time I search for it and it's sitting here. There it is. Nope, not to use. Hold on. I just don't understand where my charts go. Hold on. Prudence stops, stop, sell, CL, 226 contracts. Go to crude a second here. Um, but the hourly ATR is 56.7, so 56 ticks, right? So you can say once you get an uh, hourly ATR away from a prior zone and you get a new one, you can say, you know what? Okay, now I'm playing out of, the, out of this current one. We're far enough away. We're a full hourly ATR. Now I'm going to play a fade. Struggling here with my 85 charts. So meaning we know that the hourly ATR is 56 ticks, right? And there's so many algos that play ATR. So this first zone is obviously we're 56 ticks away from there, right? We're 70 ticks away. So you can say if this zone fails, I'm playing back for a move back into this zone, right? Cancel this. I probably wouldn't play because you again you got to judge your risk too. So you say, okay, I'm getting short here. Well, where's your risk going to be? You can go a half ATR. So you're only risking maybe 30 ticks to make 60 or 70, right? This zone's a little hairy because this is only 40 ticks. I probably wouldn't take that, but you could, again, I'm just showing you different variations on how you can play these things. Say, I don't, I don't like directional trade, Scott. Directional trade happens 15% of the time, 10% of the time, which we just were just talking about this in my room, which is true. What happens 80, 80 to 85% of the time? Range trade. So it would probably behoove you to come up with a strategy where you're just trading, you know, in certain situations, once these zones establish, then you're just trading from zone to zone to zone to zone because it happens all day, every day in all these markets. So that's just another strategy you can employ. We're kind of working on that in the room. Um, I'm talking about getting another, just set up another account where I just trade that in a vacuum, right, where I'm not paying attention to my my thesis stuff where I'm just playing zone to zone and there's something to be said for that too. So I'm just giving you guys some ideas. All right. So again, if this moves higher here, 
I need to see. So for my directional stuff, I got out here with that liquidity and I heard this fire off. So I'm like, I'll just wait. So now if this moves, hey, look what's up here. I wonder where we're going. If this moves an ATR above here, retest fails, I will get in and I'll play for a move up into this, at least for some of them, right? Because again, we have now officially had an, a failed breakout. I can't believe I'm going to do this again. Where's my chart? There we go. This is a fail breakdown of this. We got through there. This could literally do this today. I've seen it many times in the old, right? So this is where the signal is. If I get that retest fail, I'll be watching up into the zone and that's right where that liquidity is. So we don't know again, we'll wait for this to I'm trying to get my, my zones straight here. I mean, all my charts. So again, I got to see this go 27 ticks above here to confirm this is a stop and hold, right? Stop run that holds, meaning it gets an ATR above. Then a retest fails. I get in a half ATR. I'll play for at least up to there and probably higher. And I put my stop and ATR below here. I usually go a little outside an ATR, ATR, ATR and a half. But you can even skip below in this zone as well. So nice iceberg by CL, 152 contracts. That's all hypothetical until it happens. So we're watching that. <coughs> Let's see what's going on. Crude, I took it on the chin earlier, and of course, it finally, I bought it twice. So let's go over this just so you guys can see my process. So, well, well did I answer your question first? I forgot what the question even was. Uh, no, not yet. What was the question? Are, are, well, I didn't even ask it yet. Oh, um, okay. I was like, you, you, you can remember the question. Maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah. No, no. You started talking about something else. Um, uh, and, and no, no problem. It's um, a few different things. I mean, uh, uh, Alan is just saying that uh, Yellen and Powell are test testifying right now, so uh, maybe a little bit of volatility uh, jumping around for no reason. Um, and then, um, uh, let's see, uh, Jay is asking about, um, uh, the indicator for support and resistance. That's the Lud Lud Ludwig levels that you were talking about, correct? Yeah. Go to ludwiglevels.com or her website's from 1982. I actually make fun of her about it and she knows she needs to fix it, but, um, she has a three day free trial on there. You can check them out. And then again, members of my room get a discount. Um, so if you join the room, I'll tell you about that. But okay. uh, yeah, bloodwiglevels.com. The um, uh, Mark is kind of related here, um, uh, and Mark has some suggestions uh, as well. He and and I think uh, both Mark and Jay are, are new in here, so um, uh, to to bookmap uh, or at least bookmap education. Um, uh, Mark says uh, very uh, educational, fascinating, but your setup seemed to be relying on tools other than bookmap. Can you point out bookmap displays or data you're specifically using in your setups? You mentioned a, d a number of different considerations and it's a little muddled for me anyway, is what he's saying. Um, and uh, anyway, I'll let you answer it. I know you are um, going over very specific things in bookmap, uh, but uh, uh, I, I would just comment uh, that these are kind of bigger picture um, tools uh, that uh, is just kind of guiding him, but um, uh, then he's, you know, getting very specific with bookmap. Right, exactly. That's what I said at the beginning of this webinar, right? I, I come up with a story, a thesis of what is going on in the markets, right? So let's go back to crude, since I wanted to cover that anyway. Right. So I come up with what, I look at the bigger picture stuff. I start with my structure, can structure meaning balance areas, right? Markets trade in, in, in two states. They're either balancing or directional conviction, balancing, directional conviction, balancing, directional conviction, balancing, directional conviction. That's one or two states, right? So I try to determine based on how we're reacting at certain balance areas and if we're breaking out, if they're failing to break out, things like that. I come up with a thesis for the day. Is my thesis always right? No, not at all. But it helps me kind of clarify what I'm looking for, right? And I try to trade in that direction. So, um, and then I, I'll just use the other stuff to kind of 
clarify for me, right? So I look at that stuff, then I'll look at the market profile, which is just, it's, it's basically this stuff just displayed in a different way that helps you understand where value is and how the market is reacting value to value and things like that, right? So like, like I told, like I showed you, let me just jump to ES or NQ. ES is probably better today. This is, this is giving me a story, a, a picture of what's happening. This could not get into this prior value area. Then we accept it back in here. So if there would have been a short signal up here, I would have loved to short it up here and didn't happen, right? So meaning I come up with my story and then I wait for the book map volume to confirm my story. And then I trade in that direction Then I'm able to control my stop, my losses, or my, or my risk on the setups, right? So that's what I look for. Stop, stop, sell alert at ES. 575 contracts. This is a perfect example. Now we are at the bottom of this. We're either going to bounce or we're going to move out. I am, I was short biased up here. I still am short biased for what didn't happen. If this was bullish, this would have broken in here. So I'm still short biased, but I want to see this get out of this area. So you see how I come up with my thesis. And then I pull up my real time volume, which is the most important thing you can possibly be using because lines on a chart are lines on a chart and they mean nothing until the real time volume confirms or denies them, right? So that's how I trade. So now I wait for a setup. So now if this breaks, this is 900 stop run. That's a lot, right? So this is right at the bottom. Let's draw this zone. If this breaks, I will get short because I know we're breaking out of that market profile. I already had a, a bearish sentiment based on everything we just talked about. Now I'm getting the real time volume to confirm it. If this breaks lower, it's confirming my bearish sentiment and then I can take a short. And then when you have the real time volume setups, you're able to control your risk. So say this, which I think is going to happen, but we'll see. It doesn't matter what I think. I have to let it happen, right? So here's your zone. Is this going to turn into a dumb and dumber, meaning the dumb money puke, the retail trader puke, and then it, there's no real money to push it lower. We know this is the market profile low. You could go long here if if you like longs right now, right? Or it's either or it's going to come down here. It's going to stay basically in the zone. It's not going to get an ATR above here, and then it's going to go like this, and then it's going to break and break down. And this is my real time volume confirming this is a stop and hold, stop run holds real the big money comes in and pushes it lower right it, meaning it wasn't just the puke selling there's real money continuing to sell that's what a stop and hold is right so i have my thesis i know what i want to see and now i've I, you know again i was waiting for a short i wish i could have gotten short higher at the top of this and then you look at this i mean this actually that's nasty sorry um, <clears throat> So what this is, again, we talked about this earlier. This is the bottom of this. So this is about to break down out of this balance here through the high volume note of this prior balance. That's negative as well. That's extremely negative. That should be a playbook that we talk about in my room all the time for anyone in my, in my room that's in here, right? That's what I'm playing for. Could this hold? Absolutely. Could you go along here? Absolutely. Is there, if, if this thing holds, you want to see, so what do you mean by hold, Scott? Well, ATR is 6.86 points, meaning seven points. So a, a hold of this area. So I don't know what this area is. I don't know if this is a dumb and dumber or a stop and hold until it can get at least an ATR above or below this. Again, this is just from my personal experience studying, watching this thing for two years on the best way to enter these trades and not just jumping in. like. You know, I, when I first started learning this, I would, I would jump in right there. Sell alert at ES, 702 contract. You got huge sell ice coming in this zone too. This is confirming. Sell alert at ES, 707 contract. So again, you, now you have real time volume in this. This is going, whatever way this breaks is going to be the move, right? And I'm, I'm betting down. I don't really want to go long here, but you could. But what I was saying is you want to see this get an ATR above, and then you know whether this is a, Dumb and dumber, and then that would be broken ice too, because now you got sell ice, sell ice coming in. Or if it gets below here, it's a stop and hold and a Titanic setup. A Titanic setup is just literally like a market running into an iceberg. I know it's very technical and well thought out, but be facetious. So here, I'm going to have to draw this zone. Now you have 
1,200 cell ice in this, you know, we'll just draw this right here, just to, even though I'm gonna wait for a break of the stop area, just so you can see it, this is pretty condensed on top of it. So how do I draw these zones? I, you can see where this came in. You can see it on the icebergs on chart too, which is very helpful to figure out where it started, where it stopped. Came in there, you can see the big buying coming in, trying to lift it out. Oh, here's a mouthful of icebergs, sell icebergs, hidden orders in the order book, the big money, right? That's who puts icebergs in the big money because they can't just flash 1,200 in the book. Look, look at the size of this of this dome, depth of market, 80, 80, 100. What do you think? What do you think the algo is going to do? If someone throws in a 1,200 offer, the market's going to run away from it. That's what algos do, right? That's why they have to secretly put their orders in. So it's only a fraction of that they have to display in the order book, and then when it, once it's hit, then it then it basically just shows you know it, it shows the whole the whole thing appears. So this was basically right here, maybe like a you know a, a hundred lot. They try to buy into it, thinking they can rip it, and they're like, oh no, there's another eleven hundred behind there, sell ice, right? So let me just try this on real quick. Hopefully you guys are following what I'm telling you. All right, that was there there. Again, this is a zone within a zone. <clears throat> it's the wrong drawing tool. All right, so you can see here, I'm just gonna play, I mean, I know this is here, but I'm playing off of this zone. So I'm gonna need to see this in, especially on the short side. So there's two ways you can play these zones. You can play aggressively. Oh, you know what I forgot to turn on, sorry. I totally forgot about my tick strike. This really helps me decide if I wanna be aggressive out of zones or not. So whoever asked that question, who was confused before, now they're really gonna be confused. They're like, what the hell is this now? These are just the stocks, obviously the FANG stocks that comprise the index, the S&P, the, the highest weight of stocks in the S&P and the NASDAQ that the futures are derived, derived from, derivative, right? That's why it's called derivative. So I like to watch these to see if they're hitting these stocks, if I want to be aggressive out of these zones. What does aggressive out of the zones mean? It means I don't wait for a full ATR retest fail. It means the minute this gets a half ATR above or below here, I'm in. I did say the other last webinar, because I keep getting burned being aggressive, I've lost like I can't probably three or four times in the last few webinars being aggressive. So I did say on these webinars, I'm going to be conservative, meaning I need to see move away a full ATR. So that would be seven points right now. A retest, a failure, half ATR, and then I'm in short. And then my stop goes a full ATR plus a few ticks because you want to get out of the ATR range above the zone. And then that's how I trade, right? There is There are times in certain situations this could be one of them because we know we're breaking out of this market profile if this moves lower, right? That you could be aggressive on the first break of that zone. Meaning, so if we break out of here, you can see there's nothing here. Like this could be a huge move lower, right? So I know that. So I potentially on first break, meaning a half ATR, I could just jump in here, not wait for this, this, this. You're, you're better off waiting for that but the problem is you know because 80 plus percent of the time it will retest the zone then go by the time it doesn't retest the zone you're sitting here beside yourself because you knew this was going to break and you were too you were being conservative waiting for that and it just does that that's only 15 to 20 percent of the time but it does happen so that's what you as a trader have to determine based on where you are based on your thesis the better you get watching these areas and understanding it you can say hey i want to be aggressive here i don't want to be aggressive so I may, even though I said last time I wasn't going to be aggressive, I know this is a very important area. If we break here, I may get in a half ATR below the zone aggressively as long as three or four of these stocks are getting hit, and I'll get in short. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll, we'll see. Again, we're just still right in the middle of the zone. We don't know what this is yet. Could you go long? Yeah. If your thesis is, I want to be long, which you'd be a multimillionaire if you've been saying that for the last year and a half, because all we ever do is that, right? I wouldn't fault you. Um, as soon as we break out of here, you can be aggressive and buy it, or you can wait for a full ATR, retest fail, buy it, and watch it rip. And then you might move all the way back to their side. The reason I am bearish is what we talked about earlier. This had a chance today 
if this is so bullish, why why do we fail here again? I showed you this yesterday. It was twice. This is the third time. If we're bullish, why didn't it do that? That's a story to me. And I said I wanted to get short here. This was on the webinar, and it moved all the way down. I just didn't get my signal. But that's why I don't want to go long. It doesn't mean it can't bounce off here and come all the way back and do this for the rest of the day. It, it certainly can. So, again, if you like this area to get long, well, this volume setup could help. This can confirm along. We don't know what this is yet until it breaks out of here. Right, so you see how you can trade either way depending on what you think about the market. I think we're going lower, so I'm not going to buy here. I will sell though. So hopefully that it makes sense. Another thing you want to watch here, we, I've been burned on this the last couple of days in the trade room. It's a good learning experience with, for everyone watching. You get smoked. You want to see when we're breaking important areas, this or if we're at, let's see where we're at the standard deviation. Again, this is going to confuse. The newer people, another thing that I watch, but you got to pay attention to. So we are, algos run 80% of the trade in, the, in these markets, right? If not more. Algos love to trade. So this is VWAP. These are standard deviations of VWAP. This is the minus one standard deviation. This is minus one and a half. This is the minus two. Algos love to play rejection of standard deviation back to VWAP. So this is not a good place to aggressively go short unless this tick is making extremes. Is it making extremes? No. So what I'm going to do, I know I said I would be aggressive. These are firing off. But I'm going to wait for a, a full ATR retest fail because this thing is not making extremes. What are extremes? Well, this, what is this? This is the tick, NYC tick. All this is showing how many stocks in the 5,000 plus universe of the, of the Dow stocks, um, NYSE stocks, I should say, are up ticking versus down ticking, right? When and you can see when we're just within this five minus 500 plus 500 range, this is not a trend type situation. When you start to see, and I'm gonna give you guys an example of this one, once, once it settles down a little bit, um, you know, whatever happens here, then I'll show you. But you wanna see, if you're going to push through these extremes of VWAP, like we are right now, you want to see the big money. You want to know what institutions are playing. How do you know institutions are playing? When this thing starts making extremes. And a great blog on that, um, a great explanation of that, and he, he goes into the details, Dr. Brett Steenbarker. He's the one that, very good friends with him. He's probably the top trading psychologist on the planet. Um, he sat behind me for a year. He wrote the book, Enhancing Trading Performance. I'm in that book. The point is, he knows what he's talking about, and I'm going to actually find this right now. I'm going to put it in the chat for you guys, and you can read about the tick, in case I'm not being clear. Let's see. Um, and he, he has a couple different um, write-ups on this. Let me see if I can do this. I don't know if this is going to go to everyone, Bruce. If not, if you can share it. So read that. It talks about how... You know if the, the big money is playing if you start to see the universe of stocks getting crushed. That would be minus 800 plus, right? So minus 800, minus 1,000. You can see here, this is just, we're not, there's no extremes here. Scott, click click on the, it says, uh, you know, uh, two, and then um, uh, select all all entire audience, and then, and then uh, post that link. Okay, there you go. Yeah, there you go. So that's uh, Dr. Steenbarger's uh, log, uh, blog there. Right. So read that. So I I have been burned, and I'm going to show you a couple of these again once we figure out what's going on here. The last couple of days where I have shorted at the negative two standard deviation being aggressive, and the thing is just ripped in my face, right? Because this thing was not showing extreme values. So this is how you use this. You got to be careful, though. It doesn't mean... No, if we're right in the middle of a, uh, right, so say we're like yesterday, was it, yesterday was a good, good example. Let me show you. So yesterday we weren't making extremes and we fired off all the way down here. This is a 30 point move. So this is where you gotta be careful with the tick. You don't say, you don't use this as far as, hey, we're not making extremes, we can't sell off. That's not what I'm saying. We can sell off 50 points. What I'm saying is when you get to extremes like we're at right now, if you don't like the negative two standard deviation, if you don't see 
all and the universe is fast getting hit, it's very, very likely to snap back, right? And again, you can come up with trading strategies just based on the negative two standard deviation, right? So now you see we've actually made the sort of the largest down tick of the day. It's still not extreme, but we got to minus 650-ish. I still want to see more than that if I'm going to be aggressive out of the zone. If not, I'm waiting for a full ATR, which is again seven points. S and P stop stop sell alert at ES. 673 contracts. Six and a half points. As I said, I want to watch. I'm not I'm not gonna but then again, I wouldn't have been aggressive either. See how these stocks are not firing off? I wouldn't have been aggressive either way here. And I'm especially not being aggressive because, well, here we go. This is what I want to see. See that? See how we're close? This is this got to minus negative 800. That means the big money's starting to play. So hopefully, I get a retest of the zone to go short. There you come all the stocks. That's fine. I would not have been aggressive there at that uh, half ATR break of that zone because these were not firing off. So now I'm just praying here is your ATR, right? You see why I didn't want to be long? This is why, right? I, I just based on my thesis of what happened, if it was so bullish, why didn't it break into that prior profile that we're talking about? So now I'm praying we get a retest. This is the problem. If you are conservative, you may not get the retest. This may just do that. But I think there's a very good chance of that because that's pretty much what it always does. And I will wait for retest fail. I have ATR, I will get in short and I'll risk a full ATR plus a point above this zone. So hopefully that's clear. Now we just wait. Again, is it going to suck if this thing just free falls? It sure is. And that's the risk you take if you're not so aggressive. nice iceberg sells, yes. 161 contracts. And here's another thing you want to be cognizant of. Now we're at negative three standard deviation and we're near the blue love there's a very good chance this thing pops back at least to that zone we may get to the top of that zone and then take another shot at this so this is not a great place to go short right here so here we go now see if we can get this i mean right here right i want to see a retest of this zone and then a failure and then i'll get in <clears throat> Yes, it could just rip straight down, and then that, that's the risk I take, right? You got to decide how you want to trade it. You want to trade it aggressively or not. Any questions, Bruce? Uh, yeah, so regarding this question, because there is some kind of back and forth here in the questions about um, other tools that you're using, like the Algo guy um, uh, and the other tools, but like, um, if I can just add a little bit here, I mean, like what Scott had mentioned about um, uh, the um, uh, market profile and volume profile, uh, and he showed like the statistics, uh, you know, like the bell-shaped curve and whatever, like um, you know that that is um, a higher time frame outlook. Uh, and then what he means with the real-time volume here is the then and now. Like right now, what is it doing and where is it moving and where is it going and what kind of insights do you have? I've always kind of explained it this way. Uh, I hope it helps um, that when you're looking at a volume profile is tilted, that statistical bell curve is tilted on its side, but it's aggregated data um, within a, a long period, right? Uh, that's not giving you the then and now, it's giving you the horizontal, it is not giving you the vertical. And that's why Scott talks about the uh, real-time volume uh, giving you this vertical element here uh, to understand where price might be going. Right. Well, it's a vertical element and it's the most important element, right? Again, yeah. these areas mean nothing unless there's real money or it could be dumb money as well. And let you, the real-time volume confirms your areas is what it does, right? That's why people that just play traders that just play bar charts, I say it every time for, for however many years I've been doing webinars, with you guys with bookmap it, it, you know you could be the best chart reader on the planet you still don't have all the information i don't care how good you are at this you can be 10 times better if you know hey you're like hey i i this is my setup we're breaking down out of balance through the high volume node there we go we're breaking out of market profile i want to go short here unless you know if you don't have the real-time volume you, you don't have the full picture you don't know for sure if this is going to work or not i know based on all the stuff we just covered 
that's all telling me, yeah, it's go time on the sell side, but I need this to confirm. And we just did. We just got an ATR below there. So this is confirming this is a bearish setup. Now I know I have a much, much higher chance of success than just playing bars on a chart or lines on a chart because the real-time volume is telling me something's wrong here as far as if you want to be bullish, you're in trouble. You had a sell stop run that continued. Real money had to come in. We saw the tick making negative. And you had sell ice come in inside this zone, right? So that's real-time volume confirming your thesis. So again, if you're just reading charts, you're not, you don't have all the information, period. I don't care what you tell me, you don't. <clears throat> and it's the most important information you can possibly have. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, that addresses it very, very well um, and uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I, I can understand the confusion for some of these guys uh, newer to, to your, your room here. Um, but uh, uh, you know, you know it's time. I can understand they're newer, newer to to Bookmap here. Um, so they're asking these questions about all these different things. Um, right. Well, that's but, what I explained too. Is you know, th this is the Global Plus webinar, right? This isn't for everybody. This is just for Global Plus subscribers. What I've said since I've been doing these is th this is more advanced, right? Because most of the people on here, traders on here, have watched many, many of my webinars. So I don't go into the basics like I do in the pro trader series things like that so that's why you may feel confused and like oh there's all this stuff it's just because i'm not explaining you know I, i'm explaining it a little bit but not in full depth right so that's where you know if, if you want to learn more you can get a hold of me i do the mentoring you can come in the room you, know, you watch me twice a day do this exact thing every single every single day so you'll learn eventually but if you feel lost it's because i'm not diving into the basics because most of the traders on here already know all the basics that are watching me in prior weather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that is the goal of these um, advanced webinars uh, to, you know, um, immediately jump into um, the, the advanced uh, uh, trading. Um, let's see uh, some more questions here. Um, Alan was asking about, uh, you know, um, how maybe gold uh, relates with, um, uh, you know, volatility and these, uh, you know, testifying of, of um, uh, Yellen and Powell uh, right now. Um, do you um, look for any sort of kind of hedging opportunities of like, uh, you know, the stock market is starting to do this and I, I know that they are testifying, therefore uh, I will, um, you know, jump into gold uh, to because the stock market is dropping, people are going to buy, be buying gold pretty quickly. No, I, I do not trade like that. I've used my structure. I don't trade on fundamental stuff. First and foremost, gold does not trade the opposite of stocks most days anymore. It used to. Now it basically does the exact same thing. Uh, today is a different story. But uh, I don't trade off of fundamental news. I let the market tell me what, what the fundamental news means to it, right? It's not my job to say, hey, this is bullish and I buy and the market just rips down. Like I, I don't. And, and I keep buying because this is how traders lose money because they're convinced that's bullish. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what the market thinks, right? So I don't, I do not trade off that stuff. I wait and I watch how the market reacts and I watch my areas that I know are important and I wait for the real time volume to confirm. So it could be, you know, your best bet is just not to trade at all during the testimony, during a number unemployment or whatever, waiting for it to settle down and then getting back in, right? That's the best way. But to try to disseminate what's going on by, what the market thinks that you know is interpreting what is being said that is not a winning strategy and you will get your head ripped off and i do, and i do not look at gold versus stock like again it moves 95 percent of the time in the last five years it's been moving in tandem three years it's been moving in tandem with the stock market so you can't look at that either so that's a long answer for no i just continue to use again my areas that i know are important and you can see here this is actually I normally would short, you could short this straight directional move, but since we violated that, this could keep going. But the point is I just use my structure and I use the real-time volume and I trade it. I don't care what the news is. I let I let the market tell me what they think of the news. All right, so as we're talking, this is trying to retest this zone. So if it retest fails, I will give this short a chance. What are we doing here? We're retesting. The bottom of this profile so it could pop in here just a tad but i'm, I'm expecting this and then, and then that
Here's your retest. Let's see if we get up there. Like I said, 85% of the time, especially NES, it'll retest the zone. As I said, it'll probably come like within two tick, one tick. There's that. Yeah, two ticks. And then now it'll free fall like 30 points and I won't have to trade on it. So if that happens, I'm still going to be patient. But if these start firing off again, I'm just going to hop in on this trade. So <clears throat> then you have to determine based on your account size how much you should be risking. We go over this every time. This is the most important thing you can possibly do as a trader is determine how much you should be risking of your account size. You should never be risking more than 2% of your account size, probably 1.5%. So how do I determine that? Well, I look at my zone. First of all, this zone went from basically 52 down to 47. That's five points. I know the ATR is six and a half, so we'll say seven points. So that's 12 points I have to risk. Plus, if I get in a half ATR, that's another three and a half. That's, so that's 15 and a half points basically of risk from where I enter to where I would stop out. So then I go to my little handy dandy risk calculator. Everyone in the room has this. Actually, they've worked on it. There's a couple of different versions in my trade room. So then I go, this is based on a $100,000 account, 2% risk. Again, if you're trading micros and you have a $10,000 account, which is all you should be trading if you only have a $10,000 account is micros. You don't have to do anything here. This is just a 10th of the value, right? Then so make this 10,000 in your head. And then these are how many micros you can put on. So full size, if I'm risking 15 and a half points, I can only put on three, right? If you're trading micros, you get a $10,000 account, you can only put on three. There you go. That's the most important thing. So here's the retest of the zone. Now, now again, I just don't jump in on the retest because this could easily, not easily, but it happens quite often. This can just do this or right through it, go on, right? I wait for a retest failure and then I get in a half ATR. So my half eight, my ATR, not mine, the yes, ATR is 6.64, so I'm gonna say seven. So three and a half points below the zone. Now I already know how much size I can put on. I could put on a three lot. See how that works? So we're going to go 47, what's that, 44, 43 and a half, 43 quarter is my entry. And then if I get filled on that, then my stop goes a full ATR plus four, four ticks. I try to get it outside the ATR. You can go to ATR and a half if you want above this zone. Gold stops TC, 569 contracts. This keeps rolling. I should have uh, been paying attention because this was definitely a... Uh... Through Ice Iceberg Cell CL, 150 contracts. Come back to this in a second. This has just been stop, stop and hold city. You can see every one of these, every one of these held. This is where you get your confirmation. That was a good exit right there, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't want another 150 ticks. Through thy iceberg by CL, 150 contracts. Anyway, you can see all these on here. Every one of these are stop and hold, stop and hold, stop and hold, stop and hold, straight up. And every one of them, you know, if I still had position on, I could have been trailing my stop based on the new setup. That's the glory of the setup. One of the incredible things of the setups. We don't have to be risking based on, you know, for instance, if you're trading off a bar chart, where, where is your stop here? Besides, I just want to break even. I don't want to lose money on this trade. Where would you put your stop? I mean, say you got long right here, and you don't you don't have any of the real time volume information, and you get long here. Well, where's your stop going to be? You going to put it all the way back down here? Are you going to risk 300 ticks on that? No. There's nowhere to really judge where you should be putting your stop. Yeah, you can use like you know other stuff like um, BWAP stuff, but that's the point. That's the, that's the glory of the. Um, of the uh, SI indicator where you get in the, in the zones, you can trail your stops based on the most recent side because they shouldn't be violated if you're writing your thesis and they have not been violated. You can see this. This thing can keep ripping. What I would love to see now, and try it here a little bit, but I'd love to see a retest of this, then go. But this could go straight to this now. This is actually one, two. <clears throat> You can see how important this profile is. 
you see what we did right out of here, right? Directional conviction. Very, 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 very important. And this is where we're probably heading. And this may just go straight there. I would love to see one of these. Give me a chance to go long again and then move back up. It's a pretty big move. All right, let's see what's going on here. So we did retest this ice zone too. Actually, what I'm going to do here, well, if, if this if this comes back, so this retested this zone, so a half ATR out of here, I will go short. So I can go three and a half points below here. It just saves me three points if these are firing off. So you see what I'm like, if this was this, this zone by itself, then I would wait for this and then where my stop is here. But yeah, this as well, that was the 1200 cell ice, which we just retested, you know, as are about to fail. So if this comes down here and I see these coming out, I'm going to get in here instead of here. If that makes sense based on this new setup. So where do we bounce? This is why you have to be very careful. And I always forget to keep an eye on this and it's cost me dearly this week of shorting it, like getting aggressive at the wrong spot. Not that my thesis is wrong, but there's a spot to, where you wanna be aggressive and there's a spot you don't wanna be aggressive. Like, look at this, look how well these lugs work. We call them lugs instead of saying love with levels every time, right? And that was again, it's minus one, minus one and a half, minus two, that was almost minus three you do not want to be shorting on that. Very rarely will it continue, right? When it pops back, now we got the pop back to the zone. Now you can short and then give us a shaft to, to rip through there. <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys some examples here in a second. I just want to see how this unfolds. All right, this is probably going to take a while. So, um, so to show you what I mean about the tick and how it's cost me the last couple of days, like I'm a rookie amateur in my room. Um, here. So this was Monday's trade. I was short ES off of the open. Can't really see one on There you go. So I got short. This was a Titanic setup, meaning there was cell ice, you can see the black zone. We moved an ATR away, we retested, we failed. I got an half ATR, exactly how I play all my zones, right? When I'm conservative. I actually had seven, eight points in my favor and I did not cover this. And I'm gonna show you exactly where it was and what didn't, wasn't happening with the tick that I missed. And I turned I turned a seven point winner into like an eight point loser, more than that. So I took like a, $2,800 loss when I could I at least got out of some of them there and yeah, I could help some. So what could I, what did I miss that day? You know, being the 24 year old, 24 vet, year veteran that I am <laughs> and, and didn't, didn't even see this at the time. Here we go. Look at what this tick was doing. Again, I don't have the 500. I made the 500 after this debacle of this day, but this is, we came down. This is, look at that. Right, so this is let me get a different color here. Again, standard deviation. I mean, um, yeah, standard uh, VWAP. One standard deviation, one and a half. We came down to the one and a half. This was ADD, so that you had a diverb. We haven't talked about ADD again. Whoever was saying they were confused, I'm just throwing more and more at you. But once you learn all this stuff, it's just basically you don't trade off of each one individually. You just keep an eye on this stuff. This was a divergence, right? We had come down to a low in ES, and this was not making a lower low. So you pay attention to that. But the, the main thing was we are at negative one and a half standard deviation where the algos kick in the reversion to VWAP. Look at the tick. It was minus 200. That is not institutional selling at all. That is just prime for, for the algos to rip it back in my face. And instead of noticing that, I'm sitting there holding the bag, and then I get stopped out 15 points higher. It was, it was brutal, right? So then what I did is I went in. So a day where it will hug, we call it a hugger. We do now after I came up with my terms after we got smoked. Look at this day. Look at the difference in the tick. So this was on my on my uh, think or swim, this is just a negative two standard deviation. So you see how this one, this one did bounce here the first time, but the second time, and you can see there was nothing doing. 
Look at the second time. Look, so that that's that thousand, right? Look at the tick, and then look what we did. So that's when you say, okay, I can stay in this trade and I'm not afraid because the algos are getting overrun. So they always try to buy here. This institutional money is pounding these stocks and then it hugs it. See the difference? That's what you have to be aware of if you're playing, if you're into these standard deviations, you have to be watching this to make sure you've got some real participation by the big money. So hopefully that was a good, uh, that makes sense to you guys, but. <clears throat> All right, just waiting. Was that, did that make sense, Bruce? Is that meaningful? It should be, because that's very, 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 very important. That I, again, when I'm in my room and stuff, I'm trying to cover eight markets and I'm back and forth with these charts. So you guys think you're confused. Try being me jumping back and I only have one screen to show it. And I just forget sometimes like where we're at. I can't tell you how many, I'm going back through all my trades to see how many losing trades I put on in this situation. It's got to be, it's a ton. And it's just, you got to pay attention to that. And again, my loss is your guy's gain. That's a great learning experience. All right, so we're trying to rip through the zone. I never got in, never failed out of there. I'm just going to cancel this right now. You can see I'm starting to buy these stocks. Well, I, I think, Scott, what, what you know, you're mentioning, like, um, all, using all these different tools, et cetera. I mean, uh, again, it's higher time frame outlooks um, that you're looking at here. And then, then you're looking at book map uh, for the specifics within that higher time frame thesis and and uh, uh, technical analysis. Uh, so right. you know whatever guy gives you an edge. I mean, that, like you know maybe like David is mentioning in here, he's looking at candlestick patterns on the higher time frame. Uh, then he's looking at book map. Uh, you know uh, you might be looking at fib levels, and then you're looking at book map. So for example, you're looking at your fib levels. Then you're looking at the order flow around those FIB levels. Is it giving you an edge? Is it showing you exactly. something unique? Um, exactly. That that's the way to kind of you know consider using this product. Right. Again, this is what I use. You may say I don't like any of that. Fine. I I like using FIB. I like using Bollinger Bands. Whatever you know. Again, I don't use that stuff. You may love it. But how much more will you love it if you can confirm the volume in at those areas that you would normally short and then you get your setup that's a short setup on top of it and i like sweet now i got real-time volume confirming my thesis my idea my short idea here right or you go to get short there and you're like wait a second um so say this is like a bollinger band or something and you were going to short it and then you see huge buy ice coming you're like huh wait a second i don't really want to go short until we can get below that buy ice and then you save yourself a losing trade which is the same as putting on a winning trade, right? Because if you lose, you got to make you got to make that that loss back with a winning trade and then another winning trade. See what I mean? All right, so this may hold and move higher, and that's fine. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if I don't have this volume information, how many guys just got short? So it's how many market profile guys right now? Let's get this out of, out of here like this doesn't exist, right? Because there's so many guys that just trade off market profile. How many guys just said, yes, we'll break it down, boom, going to zero, yeah, oh no, what happened? Well, you see what happened. I mean, we did get an ATR below this, but we never got the ATR failure. So you, I didn't put a short on, did I? I was bearish, I didn't put the short on because I didn't get my setup, and now it's showing we have not got an ATR above here, but this is showing, hey, this, this area basically held. These guys were wrong. This, is, this isn't an official dumb and dumber again because we did get an ATR below here, but the stop run, you, you know, you want to see real selling. They tried to sell it for real, but it just didn't work. I never got in this trade for a reason. I need, the way these work is you need to see it move far enough away, retest and fail. I could have gotten aggressive there, but again, we were at the negative two standard deviation, blah, blah, blah. Point is, real-time volume kept me out of that trade. If I'm just trading market profile, I just ate it 15 points, right? Do you see what I'm talking about? Why, if you do not have this information, you just are not, tra you're trading with incomplete information and you are at a disadvantage. This, for the thousandth time, the SI indicator setups, stops and icebergs are the most powerful thing I have ever seen in my 24, however many years, 85 years of trading. Period. <clears throat> um, all right, so 
Yeah, there's another question about, I mean, all these different tools. I mean, we have some new guys in here, Scott, so just, uh, I'm sorry, just to, to bear with it and, and answer their questions. Um, uh, ATR, I mean, Scott is using ATR as a, a, a trade management tool here, um, uh, you know, that's, um, you know, outside of Bookmap, but uh, he's using it for his trading strategies within his trade management. Um, and you're getting it from the five minute chart, is that right, uh, Scott? Yeah, so, so again, I used to use just standard, standard, um, numbers for these zones, right? So I, for ES, for instance, was three points. So I would say, okay, once it got three points below, retest fail, I'm in. But the more I thought about it and the more I started, you know, seeing it not work as well that it should, blah, 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 you know, I started to, like, why am I not using more dynamic based on the volatility of the day? That makes a lot more sense. So I would use three points for I mean, again, 80% of the time you can use those values. So it's three points for ES, it's 10, um, it's 10 points for NASDAQ, 10 ticks for crude, 10 ticks for GC. But you're doing yourself a disservice there if you're not playing the volatility of the day, right? So today you can see this ATR is double what it usually is. So why am I going to be playing three points if the ATR is six? Like this is showing there's more volatility in the market. I'm just, this is just a dynamic way to play the zones. So I will use the five minute chart ATR 95% of the time. The time that I will revert to the hourly where I'll use 20% of hourly ATR is like after a number where it's like one um, outside move, right? So say unemployment comes out and we do that. Well, this ATR is gonna be like, um, you know, 20. Just, I'm just making an example, right? Am I gonna play a 20 ATR off of a one event move? No, right? So then what I'll do on those, in those situations, mostly all news, you know, number releases, so on and so forth, I'll use 20% of the hourly. So then if you go to the hourly, you can see our hourly ATR is close to 20. So I will use 20% of that, which is a four point ATR. So I use this when there's like some, outs not, not if there's just an outsized move, an outsized move is still a volatility in the market. If it's an outsized move caused by caused by um, a number, like like say the crude number comes out, right? I'll I'll go to the I'll go to this 20% of this until it settles down, then I'll go back to the five. You see what I'm saying? So 95% of the time I'm using five minute ATR. And it's just a dynamic way to judge volatility is all it is. <clears throat> all right, so what happened here is this still never got an ATR above here. So I still will, meaning we never violated this. This can still be a stop and hold. There's a stop run, and this still can be broken ice. I mean, a Titanic setup, right? The sell ice. We never got an ATR above here. So this zone is still in play. If we come back down here, I'll still short it, right? We got, let's see, the top of this this zone is 52. We only got up to 50. We, only, we didn't even get, we got barely four points above this stop zone. ATR is almost seven. This, nothing's violated. A lot of guys got screwed there, but this zone is still intact. So what I'm saying is these setups that I was going to short on this, I still will short same spot if this comes back down here because this was not violated in ATR to the upside. So these are still in play. And we just got out a bunch of clown shorts that weak shorts, right? And then that will be a move back outside of this. And I will definitely short it. And this is another thing, the market profile part. Once again, I don't claim to be some market profile guru, nor do I want to be. I use it in the most simple sense, but this is what they call a poor low, right? Where it's like, there's no, they call it excess, where you see how this like excess, excess, where like there's just one bar there. Many times when you get dual bars that are equal, it'll come down and retest that area. Same with this, right? So I'm, I'm, exp I'm, still, I'm still short biased. I'm not going to be long this market, in my thesis, in my bias, until we can get inside this. And again, that will also be a breakout of this. So all we're really doing now is just bouncing around inside here. But the next move down here, that'll be through that book map zone. I will short it again, and I expect to move at least to here. What's this? This is where directional conviction started, very important. Directional conviction is a very important, one of the four main chart points that you should be looking at. Directional conviction, top and, top and bottom of balance, HVNs, and buying and selling tails, right? There's a selling tail. Oh, look how good was that. Boom, boom, right? 
the bigger the tail, the more important it is. Again, I keep saying I have a course, I'm like halfway through. One of these days off my time to make it. It's just very hard with the room and everything else. But all right. We've been on almost an hour and a half. I'm gonna give this a shot here to break this. I want to see these stocks firing off. I mean, I'll still get in. I just I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna be aggressively getting in off of this zone or the bigger yellow zone here. Again, half ATR out of this zone would be right around here, 45-ish, or I can get in half ATR below this zone because this is a retest fail. It never got an ATR above here. But I want to see this thing, I want to see these stocks firing off and or I want to see this thing making some extremes again. <clears throat> Institutions showed their hand too, right? Like something, this did make an extreme. So this could come down and continue to do that. It's not like we came down here and there was nothing happening. There was some institutional play there. Again, read that Dr. Brett article. He's got like four or five, and he has links to the, to the preceding one, preceding one. Just click on those and start reading them. You'll find they're very, very interesting, and it's very, very relevant. So, keep an eye on this stuff. NASDAQ's basically done nothing today as far as signals, but I'm going to go short this too. We're just in the middle of this thing. If this breaks, watch out. We're sitting right here. That's not a good trading area. This is a tr good trading area. That's a good trading area. You're trading here. This is what you're asking for because that's all it's done for two days, three days, four days actually, <laughs> right? So if you're trading here, that's what you can expect. If you like to be whipsawed, this is your spot to trade. If you want directional conviction, these are your spots to trade. So that's why you want to be watching multiple markets so you don't have to play in bad areas. You're like, just like I showed you, oh, I was talking, to, I was thinking that was on this webinar, I talked to the room before I got on here, and I said, I'm not touching grains. I don't like where they're at, and it's confusing to me. You know, that's the whole point. That's the glory the, of using, of having multiple markets that you watch where you don't have to trade a market that doesn't make sense, or you're not, you don't have a clear picture of. You just move to another market. Here's NASDAQ. Do you want to trade right in the middle of this guy? I don't. Still painting a picture, we tried to break out and didn't do it, but I want to wait and see what we do down here. If we can break out of here, the 7, 14, 730 area, adios. Now we get a break of that balance I just showed you. Actually, that's 14,750-ish, sorry. Yeah, 14,750. All right, let's give this a shot. One of you big traders in here come in and sell a thousand lot to get this going. used to be me. I wish. Now I could put on a six slot. <clears throat> Eventually I'll get back there, but well, All right. we, we, we can instruct we can instruct the entire room to do it in sim for you. Yeah, that that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the days of being able to bully this market around like everybody else does now. And I have to not and now I'm the guy that gets bullied. It's lots of fun. What I used to do, which is really funny, there's a guy, I'm not going to name his name, I named him before, but we used to have a balance every day, and back then you can see counterparties, so you can see exactly your trade on the site. Every day it was me versus this other dude, every single day. And he could put on 5,000 contracts, I could put on three, I knew when he was loaded up, he knew when I was loaded up, it was like a big poker game every day. So anyway, he would get me so mad, like I would be out of bullets, I would only have a few hundred left or whatever, and he would just keep the guy, he was he was a complete market manipulator. He was crossing his own orders and just bad, bad news. Um, we purported to see me. I don't want to get in that story. First of all, I'll get too upset. But anyway, what I would do is I would seriously, I would come up here and I would load up. I would go like this and I would load up 400 one lots like this. And he'd be playing his game. And back then, like the technology wasn't, it wasn't as sound as now. And I would take this 400 lot order and I would drag it like this, right, I mean, it would be the whole order. And I would drag 400 one lots right into his games and it would freeze up the entire market for like 30, 30 seconds. I would, I did it so many times and CMA called us and said that we would be fine if I, if I continued to do it. That's how much it was pissing the guy off. Like he would just be literally just playing games, playing games. I would just load up, drag and drop and it would be like da -da 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 for like, it would go off for like 30 seconds and just freeze the entire market. It was, it was so fun. 
I miss those days. So there's a little story for you guys. Yeah, now <laughs> algos do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, they can't do it like that anymore, but yeah. They definitely do it, but I mean, that was just me trying to screw with the guy. And it worked. He did complain. <laughs> uh, do you ever be, have you ever been in contact afterwards? With who? That, that guy. Oh, no. To this day, if I see that guy in person, I will literally, you guys will be sending me uh, letters to jail. <laughs> So I don't know if I, I've told the story before. There was one day where the guy ran me over and I literally lost $300,000 in like 30 seconds. And it was just, the guy was, I'm not kidding you. And I'm not exaggerating. He used to video it. We call the CME in to show him. The guy would cross his orders and make it look, appear like there was big, big orders coming in the, in the book. And then people would jump on his coattails and then we'd run it right into his, his other orders opposite. It's a long story, very, very frustrating. Um, but there's one day I lost like 300 grand, like in a heartbeat. I was so mad. This is when Dr. Brett was at our firm. I literally got my jacket and I, and I was leaving the office. I was going to, the, I don't even want to say the firm. I was going, I was going to drive to the firm and I was literally going to go in there and kill the guy. That's how mad I was. The owner of my firm and Dr. Brett had to physically accost me <laughs> at the doors so I would not leave the trading, uh, the trading firm to go to go pummel this guy. Literally had to stop me physically. They called me down, had my little session with Dr. Brett, went into his office, had my, if you guys ever watched the show Billions, it was just like that, sit down, talks me off the ledge, got my composure, went in, I made back that, this is the same day, I made back that entire, I was just like, I was like a, 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 an animal, like out of control. I made back the, three, the 300 grand back and I made another $200,000 all on the same day, scalping. So that was, wow. that was that was a funny story. I really miss those days. Not when I would lose my mind, but making that kind of money. That was... Thank God Dr. Brett was there. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but it shows like that. That's a good that's a good learning experience for you guys, right? If these, you know, especially the more competitive you are, the more upset you're going to get when you're wrong. When you feel yourself, they call it going on tilt, right? I was that was the most on tilt I've ever been because I was going to literally go physically accost a guy, right? When you're on tilt. You got to learn to recognize it, right? And then that's why you want to buy Dr. Brett's books and, and learn how to handle it. The biggest thing is you're still going to get mad, but it's catching yourself is the key, right? Because when you don't catch yourself, that's when you go on tilt and you cost yourself your account, right? So the point is from that story, what you guys can gather from that is, you know, when you're losing it and you start breaking stuff and you're, you're upset and you feel like your head's going to explode, take a walk. Come back in the afternoon, you'll be amazed at how much better you'll do. You'll settle down. Trust me, that is the best thing you can do. All right, here we go. We might uh, get a break here. Here are these stocks. Let's see. What's my ATR here? I forgot all about this. 49. That is an entry. Can we put on three, though? This thing got a little outside 500. I want to see some... Um, I'm just going to get in this. I want to see some stocks firing off, but this was a retest fail, so I don't always wait for the stocks when I get the retest fail. All right, so I'll get in this. Again, all I can trade is three because of the, uh, because of my risk, right? <clears throat> um, all right? Kind of lost my train of thought thinking about my old stories, but. Here we go, right back out of here, right? Now this should do this. If this does this again, then I'm probably gonna sit on my hands until this can finally break far enough, far from, far enough away from here and then retest fail, something like that. But this is the chance, this is what I've been waiting for. So let's see. So now my stop is gonna go an ATR plus four ticks above here. So ATR is again, was it six and a half or seven? 6.64, so we'll say seven points. So I'm gonna go seven points plus four ticks, eight points. So I gotta go all the way up to year 60. And that's a big risk, but I think this thing can literally sell off 50 plus points if this is correct. There you go, stocks are starting to participate. Let's watch the tick. Let's watch the VWAP. I really want us to break through this blue lug and build new ones, and that's gonna really be 
confirming to me. There we go. Now we're coming back. You got to be careful though. If we come down here again, this is the negative two. If you don't see the tick making extremes, I'm probably going to cover at least two of them. And that's a spot gamma level two. We haven't gotten to spot gamma today. Very important as well. So whoever was complaining about this, all the stuff I'm using, I just keep <laughs> keep throwing other stuff at you. It's really not as confusing as it sounds. Doesn't? Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I mean, I just like to reiterate when it comes to the book map side, it's it's, it's actually really simple and straightforward what you're looking at. Top sell alert that he has 518 contracts. There you go, guys. That's a hugger. This could hug the deviation now. Here's your stop run. Now I can add to this trade, and now I can trail my stop. Why? Because this is a new setup. There you go. This is threshold, 509, 500 is my threshold. All right, let me draw this real quick before it snaps back in my face. Try to use yellow for stop runs. I used to use red, but it blends in too much with the liquidity and I'm colorblind, so that's why I use yellow in case you're wondering. So there you go. So what could I do here? Now I can I can trail my stop. If this fails and turns into a dumb and dumber, again, what's a dumb and dumber? Well, it's it's a it's sell, it's retail sell money, sell stops that have no follow through, and that does that. So now I can trail my stop in ATR plus four ticks above this zone. That puts me at 48. That puts me, I mean, I'm basically just into this zone, but that's okay because this this should not come back if I'm right on what's going to happen here, right? And I'll just basically, I'll lose a small amount. It puts me right back into that zone, which I don't like, but that's fine. Again, if my thesis is correct, this is going to not do that, <laughs> basically. It's going to hold. Again, you see there's real selling coming into this market. Oops, I don't want to do that. It's confusing. This is what you want to see when you're at negative two standard deviation for a chance. Doesn't mean the algos won't be able to push it back, but you get a much better chance of this being a hugger like this. That's a hugger where it hugs the standard deviation. And what this is like self-fulfilling, right? Because you got those algos that keep trying to fade it and then they get run over because real there's real selling in the market. They try to fade it, they get run over. They have to puke, they have to puke, they have to puke on top of the real selling coming in. And that's where you get your trade, and here come the stocks. And there you go. Now I can add to this too. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add aggressively to this because if these are still firing off, that means at three and a half points below here, I'm gonna add to this trade. Because I know everything we've talked about this entire webinar, I know I want to be aggressive here. Because this could be the move that I've been waiting for. What else is happening? Well, we're breaking out of that balance. You know, it's not the best place to add aggressively in the night of two DVR. DVR. Um, NQ's top geez. December's top sell NQ, right. 161 contracts. S&P's top, top sell alert at ES, 1057 contracts. There you go. So now, I'm not going to add to that one because I'm going to watch this one now. See how this works, guys? Uh, how much better is it when you know what's going on in real time? Through ice iceberg by CL, 153 contracts. Now I can tra trail my stop even more. Now I can go eight points above this. Puts me at 43. Now I basically can scratch a trade. Am I scratching because I don't want to lose money? No, I'm scratching because of what the market's telling me if I'm wrong, right? 43.25 or 35.25, so that's 43.25. See if I got that right. Pretty close. There you go. Now what I can do, I can play a retest fail on this zone or get in aggressively and see these stocks are still getting pounded. You could be aggressive. It's scary to be aggressive at the negative. See, this is good though. This is we're breaking the blue lug. Sometimes these don't update on Sierra. So I'm hoping this builds some new lugs. Let's see here. Not yet. Still coming in though. That was max, not max, but that was even 
what was negative 1100. This could be a definite hugger for a while. So remember, it's self-fulfilling, right? Because you have these elbows trying to play that, and the big money's coming in, so the big money hammers them, and then the elbows have to turn around and puke, and that causes a self-fulfilling, like, hugger, as, as we call it. <coughs> As you see, hug away. I love being short this market. I love watching these guys puke. So fulfilling. I'm still hesitant to add here just because of the, where we're at, but we still have something on it. S&P stocks stock sell alert at ES. 611 contracts. So you guys see how this is. by NQ. 151 contracts. Okay, so let's just start to watch the levels here. I don't think there's not much though. And if you see spot gamma stuff, he's been talking about this 4,300 area. We could go straight there. Let's see here. First, let me trail this stop on this newest setup. So you gotta just the on chart's the best because with the with the uh, sub chart it'll show it starting here, but you can just see it started over here. So sometimes it like lags a little bit. You can definitely see that's where it started, right? And you got the where it stopped. So Scott, um, I, there's a few questions that boy these new guys are really really uh, hitting hitting us hard with the questions. But um, I just wanted to cover a few things. Um, uh, I I just replied uh, that, uh, you know, is, do you have a plan on your managing your stops? Of course you do. Uh, you're, when you add into a position, that new position is now um, uh, the older position. You may have taken some profit, you may not have, but now the stop on that new position is the overall stop for all of the positions. Exactly. Um, so he manages the risk moving that stop down like that. Um, but uh, Vin is asking a question about, um, which, which I think is just brilliant, Scott. I, I, I really like that. Uh, I've been using that, in that for a while now, and I, I love it. Um, wow. The using using managing the trades that way um, because uh, you know you're, you're taking some partial profits, you're adding back in, but your overall stop is well managed. Um, right, uh, and it's, we, not, it's not me. And again, it's not me based on my PL, right? It's me based on these setups. That's yeah, and, why this. And and, so. and based on on that newer setup, right? So you're trailing your setup basically. Right, exactly. This is where this is where traders make mistakes, right? It's like they see this. This is a good profit for a three lot, right? They see that like I don't want to get. All right, I'm going to trail this thing because I don't. I got to pay my rent. I'm going to. The market doesn't care about where your order is. The market cares about this. So put your stuff above where. It cares about this. It shouldn't come back above that, as we talked about all day. So that's where you trail your stop, not based on your break even or I don't. I, I got to secure a profit here. You know, again, if you're using areas, I'm fine with that. And you see, we just new, drew new lugs here too, Ludwig levels, right? I this is where we're going. Is my opinion. Um, my opinion has been pretty spot on today as far as my thesis, right? So you see how this works, right? Doesn't mean I'm always right, obviously. But when I am right, I take advantage of it. When I'm wrong, I lose a little bit. I lose a little bit. When I'm right, I kill it, right? So this could be a killing day here because I definitely think we can get down to this area. Quickly, just to confuse some more people. Actually, I'm not even going to get into this today. This, this is too much. So. You guys know about spot, spot gamma. The newer guys, you don't even need to know about that yet. Get this stuff down first, and then I'll talk about spot gamma in the next one. That's the whole other thing. But he has us. What I will show you here is his levels. He put the other day that if we. Nice iceberg cell CL, 152 contracts. If we break 4,400, 40, or 4,380, the next major stop was 4,300. And he talks in SPX terms, but then here are the equivalents, right? So you can see right here, this is where I think we're going based on everything we've talked about. 
Did I say 4300? Yeah, sorry. So his 4309 is uh, S&P 4299. And what's that next to? Oh, the blue lug right there. All right, so let's make play some games, do these. I still think we're going to do that <clears throat> and manage yeah. your risk. Doesn't mean you can't stop out and get back in too, right? I manage my risk, so I'm at least going to make, you know, where do I get in here? I'm still, I'm at least going to make eight points on this trade. If this snaps back, it'll suck. Do I want it to snap back? No, it could. Absolutely. Am I going to still have a profit? Absolutely. If the snap back stop me out and then something else comes in, you can get right back in, right? You don't have to watch this thing come all the way back. Get out, wait for next setup. I'm still bearish. I'll get back in. But I'm basing it all on the, the, this stuff. I didn't really get a chance. I mean, I could have added, I could have added three times here. I just, you know, again, it's hard on the webinar showing you guys going back and forth the screens. You could add it a half ATR here. These were all fired off. You could add it a half to ATR here. I should have three positions on. And actually, I could have put on bigger positions because I wasn't risky as much with these newer ones, right? But what it should have cut it's fine. You know, this is just to show you guys. It sucks for me because I should be making a lot more money, but it's to show you guys how, how this works and how I trade. All right, uh, I'm running out of gas here. Yeah, I'm almost two hours. I can hear it. Um, but you guys know the thesis. Again, this could snap back. Just wait for, you know, we have been hugging. This is hugging. This could just continue or it could snap back to here or here. I doubt we're going to get back to VWAP today based on we shouldn't get back inside that market profile now, right? This is what the whole thesis was about and the balance. So we broke down. We tried to get back in. Let's just look at today quickly and then up off here. Right? Broke down, tried to get back in, no dice, never got above that zone, full ATR like we said, got back out. Here we go, go time. But we could still, you know this market, you know what it does, it could pop back here and then go. I don't think it will just because of the, because of what's really coming in here today. There's real selling today based on this. But if it does, it stops me out and I wait for my next spot to get short. This could straight V line, kind of like we saw gold go straight up today. This could do one of these today. That happens 5% of the time. Today could be the day. Right? If I get stopped out again, I just wait and I reload. I was going to show you one other thing. What was I going to show you? Scott, a, a question uh, uh, Vin was asking. So we, we covered like uh, multi adding in multiples on on one or around a, one kind of directional trade. But uh, what about just one trade and when do you move your stop to break even or if you do move it to break even? This is a question from Vin. I, I don't. I don't ever break even. I base it on if it happens to be break, break even based on the latest setup. Say break even was you know a full ATR above here, then I break even. If it's a loss, then it's a loss. I don't play break even. This is what I've been saying for this entire webinar. This is where traders make mistakes, where they they get stopped out because they don't want to lose. They want to break even, and then the market rips back. Everybody on here can attest to this. Rips back, stops you out, and then it breaks 50 points, and you're sitting there holding your you know what thing. Oh my God. I, I could have just made 60 points on this trade, but I wanted to make sure I broke even. The market doesn't care if you're breaking even. Look at this thing. I, could, I should have three positions out on this thing. I always can find something to complain about, by the way. So like <laughs> I said, this could be a 5% day. That only happens 5% of the time. For sell alert at ES, 700 to contract. This is one area where I may take off one spot gamma level. Looks like we're going straight there. This should be just a this should be a month this is what you guys go for this is what this is the goal of trading right you tread water you tread water you break even you lose a little you make a little then you get a month making year making day and this is it right here i should have three positions on but I'm, that's fine this is a pretty good profit for three lot <laughs> Let's see if that means it's not making extremes it sure is <clears throat> I don't pay it. I don't. I get this question all the time too. Well, here comes. They say it in the room a lot too. They're getting better at it. Like here comes liquidity. This isn't. This is. Yeah, it's liquidity. It's guy throwing in an order. I don't care about that. I care about liquidity. Hmm, kind of like this one here. Where do you think we're going? 
this is the liquidity that I care about. So when you bring up your book map, you come up with your thesis, and I, I forgot to look at liquidity today, it's very, very important. Look where all the liquidity is. Do you see any liquidity up here? No, it's down here. Where do you think we're going? That's a magnet. Paper gets their way the majority of the time. Why? Because they can push the market around. Um, but back to your question, no, I don't, I, I, this is what I've been t telling you guys this entire webinar. I'm basing my stops on ATRs from the, the, the newest thing. I think this is a setup too that didn't, I didn't hear anything. Let's see. Yeah, this is, did I miss this? This was sell ice. This is a new zone. So now you'll see how I trail my stop. This is the newest setup. That's sell ice. See this here? You start it where it started. This is confusing because it's the same color. So you guys see what you want to look for for trending moves, right? That tick is very important. And then you start using this stuff. It just like helps you stay in the trade where you're not like, oh my God, this is going to snap back like it always does because it usually always does that. But if you know, hey, institutions are playing today, again, read the Dr. Brett tick stuff. It's going to help you tremendously. You're like, screw you. This thing is going down to 4,300. You guys can try to snap it back all you want. I know what's really happening, right? So now, Back to your original question, am I trying to break even? Am I trying to secure a certain uh, profit? No, I'm playing off of what's happening in the market. This is the newest setup. I'm going to ATR above this and I'll stop out and or add. ATR again is up to seven, a little over seven. So I'm gonna go seven points, plus I go a little bit outside the ATR, four points. So eight points above this puts me at 33.50. So now I trail this down, and if I was adding, everything would be stopped out at 3350. See how it works? And it's not on me basing it on my PL. <clears throat> All Bruce, you definitely need to, uh, if you can, post this one publicly. I think this is a good method. It's, obviously, it's great that it's profitable. I think there are some really, really, really good lessons in this webinar. Yeah, and it's like an hour and 50 minutes so far. <laughs> right. All right, I'm going to just hold this for one second, see if we can swipe down to this uh, 4316 spot gamma level. But this is where I think we're going and lower. I think we're going to get down to the blue low too. But I'll watch this too to get out of one. But I could add here too. I just, the problem with adding here is you might run into that. So I, I, if we do this, 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 I'll probably add, but I'm not going to add aggressively. But you see, like it's continuing because they're pounding the stocks. They're pounding the, the FANG stocks that comprise the, you know, the majority of the highest percentage of the index, and they're pounding the overall market. That's what this tells you. I'll give us a second. I gotta I gotta get up. <laughs> So even if this snaps back, yeah, it's going to suck to give back 10 points, but I still have a very nice profit, right? And I wait for my next setup. I'm still bearish. Let's look at this real quick. See, these algos are trying their best. This is negative three. One, one and a half, two, sorry, two and a half. They try to buy at each one. And then if the money keeps coming in, the, the big money's selling, they turn around, they try to buy it, then they got to puke it. They try to buy it, then they got to puke it. And it's just a self-fulfilling hugger. This is a hugger. And we know why it's a hugger, because the tick has been, you, you, saw, you saw the tick, I keep saying the same stuff, but this is a great to hammer home into your brain, right? This could pop back to here, the old lug, and then do that. Could even come back to here. I doubt it, but it could, and I'm still looking short. Oh, and then this is what I was going to show you guys. Structure-wise, what's happening here? It's a four-day balance breakdown. Could this market just do this straight right in here? I mean, there, there's that level again. Spot gamma, blue lug, directional conviction. That's where you really want to look for profit. Can that go straight there? Sure can. Can it do this? Sure can. 
right? It could do this and still be bearish. It can even come up to the high volume node and still be bearish. I know all that. That's I know that's that's why I would stop out and then wait for these other areas to get short again, right? But I'm not just going to get out here. I'm going to give this a chance to make it here. I think it can because we know the big money's playing today. All right, Bruce. If there's no other questions. Yeah, no, I think we 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 uh, we uh, got to all of them and quite a few today. Uh, just just one thing though, like um, uh, really nice to see uh, here, Scott is um, because during these webinars, you know, about an hour, hour and a half. Usually, you go about an hour and a half, uh, and you know, you're looking for these bigger moves to to play out. Well, here it is. Um, it is playing out. Um, so. Uh, it, you know, just to, to temper expectations, like um, a lot of time, and these things they will they will play out for hours. Uh, right. You know, so it's not just you know uh, we're using order flow. Scott is using order flow here on much much higher time frames. It's not um, you know scalping back and forth and making this or that or whatever. Uh, you know, he you've you've seen he's outlaid or laid out his entire plan here several times over on the higher time frame what he's looking at and then what he's looking at in book map and then how he wants to manage it right again i think this is a great webinar and it has nothing to do with the p l you know win or lose it's still a learning experience and that's what it has to do for you guys and hopefully you got a lot out of this webinar there's a lot of good points that were shown and made and everything else so all right, that's it for me. Again, if I if this comes up, it stops me out. It's still a nice profit, and I wait for my next short signal. That's all I do. And again, you know, on regular range trade days, and this is not one of them, but you can play. You can come up with your own own signal where you play, you know, zone to zone or zone to zone, zone like we talked about earlier in the webinar. There's different ways to play these zones, right? But the real time buy-in is what is the most important thing, and for the thousandth and one time is. This indicator is the most powerful thing I've ever seen to trade with, ever, period. All right, Bruce, I will uh, see you guys next Thursday. Yeah, in October. So uh, thanks, Scott. Great, great webinar. Thanks. Appreciate it. See you guys later. Okay. Bye-bye.